This is by far the most stylish, adaptable, and melting build I have played. Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be fixing the Ember Fang, otherwise known as the best strength, dexterity, and arcane build for patch 1.09. We have the Bloodhound's Fang plus 10, and we have Morgoth's Cursed Sword plus 10. Thanks to patch 109, Great Curved Swords have been buffed, and so has Cursed Blood Slice on Morgoth's Cursed Sword. And then we also have a Dragon Communion Seal, plus 10 for our buffs. We have the White Mask boosting attack when bleed is in effect, the Raptor's Black Feathers increasing jump attacks, then we have two pieces of the Royal Remain set for some auto danger healing at 18% health and below. In the Talisman slots, we can actually swap out the Talismans depending on how we're playing. So first I have Lord of Blood's Exaltation working with the White Mask to increase attack power when Bleed kicks in. We have the Shard of Alexander boosting our two awesome unique weapon skills. And then depending on how you're playing, you can switch up the next two Talismans as follows. If two-handing Morgoth's Sword, for Cursed Blood Slice, I like to have the Green Turtle Talisman boosting our Stamina Recovery, and then the Carrion Filigreed Crest, lowering the FP cost of the weapon skill. If I am Power Stancing the two Curved Swords, I like to add the Claw Talisman to get the Power Stance Jump Attacks boosted further. These are great as they hit twice. Then, if I'm two-handing the Bloodhound's Fang, I like to switch in the Axe Talisman to boost our Charged Heavy Attacks. We'll look at combat in a moment. In the Flask of Wondrous Physic, I like to have the Faith Knot Crystal Tear boosting our Faith. More on this in a moment. And the Green Burst Crystal Tear helping speed up our Stamina Recovery. When it comes to incantations, we have Blood Flame Blade, Golden Vow, and Flame Grant Me Strength. Right, let's look at the stats so this starts to make a little more sense. I have started with the Wretch class. The complexity with this build is that these two particular Great Curved Swords are spread across Dexterity, Strength, and Arcane. And because we are going to use Blood Flame on the Bloodhound's Fang, you can argue that Faith is involved as well. So let's go through this. First I have Vigor at 50, I have Mind at 19. This is a little more than we need to buff up with one FP bar, but I found that on New Game Plus my FP was running out a little fast on the skills. This helps us get over the hump. Endurance is at 20, Strength is at 46, Dexterity is at 59, Intelligence we don't touch, Faith is at 15. This is so we can use Flame Grant Me Strength, and then with the Faith Not Crystal tier in the Physic, we can boost our Faith to 25, so we can buff with Golden Vow, and boost our damage with Blood Flame Blade a little more when we're using it. And finally, we have Arcane at a whopping 60. This is- In my fixed build, I have 60 Vigor, 9 Mind, 19 Endurance, 56 Strength, 60 Dexterity, which is going to be boosted to 70 with Dexterity Not Crystal tier. 7 Intelligence, 28 Faith, and 45 Arcane. We're going to be using the Power Stanced Bandit's Curve Sword with the Blood Infusion, as well as with Seppuku. Then we're going to also have a Dragon Communion Seal for Grey Rolls War, Golden Vow, and Flame Grant Me Strength. Then for Armor, we're going to have the White Mask, Raptor's Black Feathers, Tree Sentinel's Gauntlets, and Tree Sentinel's Greaves. And for Talismans, we're going to have Lord of Blood Exaltation, Claw Talisman, Millicent's Prosthesis, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. For the Great Rune, as always, we're going to do Rodan's because we are going to do some casting. And then for the Crystal Tier, we're going to have Thorny Cracked Tier and then the Dexterity Not Crystal Tier to greatly increase our DPS.